It's me again, Argon. I know I said I wouldn't be recording because I'm a student, but I've recently found out that being a student actually, um... <coughs> has a lot of free time associated with it, which I was not expecting. This video, I've been playing Guild Wars 2 for a decent bit now. I played it like four years ago, or, uh... Four years ago, I played it with my good friend Frostbite, Ariam, Karu, Ikaruga guy who's always in my Sea of Thieves videos, guy who was in my three recent Guild Wars 2 videos, and he was the one who got me into it. It's his favorite MMO of all time, and he has like a bajillion hours in it. I recently got back into it with End of Dragons. I loved End of Dragons, and Path of Fire. I didn't record it, but I actually tried out Path of Fire for the first time. I stopped playing because I just found it really boring. I always loved Mesmer, but... I just couldn't, like, you know, get around. Like, I, I, I don't know, I just felt like there were better games. If that makes sense. So, what I want to make this video here about today is things about Guild Wars 2 that I think could have been done a lot better. Because I've been seeing a lot of videos on YouTube. Not necessarily recently, unless you count last few months recent, but just a lot of videos about why Guild Wars 2 is one of the best MMO RPGs of all time. Like people are like, uh, why I dropped, uh, what's the other thing? What's it called? World of Warcraft for Guild Wars 2. Why I dropped this for Guild Wars 2. Why Guild Wars 2 is the best game ever. Why I actually, it's not that godsend of the game, if that makes sense. It's at least just my Uh, it's not known on my channel, but I have about a thousand hours of morphing, so I can compare to that. And I've also I've played a I have nearly 500 hours in Swator, which is an MMORPG that is extremely similar to Guild Wars 2. There are things that are better in Swator, and there's things that are better in Guild Wars 2. So things that are better in uh, things that I found that are better in Guild Wars 2: a lack of like skill management. There's only 10 skills that you're gonna add. Oh, excluding the F1 skills, some of those can get complicated and like elementalist, but there's literally a complicated scale, so you know what you're getting into. But like, this is simple, this is straightforward. I like this a lot compared to Swator, where you have about a billion different skills and you don't know which ones are good, you don't know. And um, I haven't played it in a hot minute, but I'm pretty sure the hot bar's a lot bigger as well. Like, I, I know recently they've been, like, optimizing it lately. They've been optimizing Sator lately to have, uh... And now that that's the first thing. So, second thing. This is gonna be something that I think Guild Wars 2 does badly in comparison to Sator, and that would be how the story works. In Guild Wars 2, you do have choices that influence how the story plays out, but the way these choices are presented it's like, you'll have the big old cutscene that's fully voice acted. Wait for this. They are fully voice acted and everything. But then when the time comes to make the choice, it's like, Commander, your call. Commander, your call. You you make the call, Commander. Commander, what should we do next? And the, the, the cutscene just ends. And then you talk to whatever NPC to make the decision, and it's not voice acted. It's, um... It's just kind of you make the decision. And that's one of the weaker points, I think, of the other wars, too. It's like... I, it just breaks all the immersion all of a sudden. For example, uh, the main story, the fighting Zaitan, you come to a point about halfway through where you have to choose between... At least in here. What else? What else? Yeah, in Swator, in comparison to that, in Swator, Making decisions, it's live. You in the cutscene, you make the you click one, two, or three. And even farther than that, like each choice influences the story to such a degree that I never would have expected when I first played through the game. Like you can dead ass kill off characters that you think are gonna be main characters at certain points in the story. Uh, my favorite story in Swator is the Sith Inquisitor. I like that slave to, uh, Sith, what is it, Counselor? No, that's Jedi, Sith. That, I don't know, Rags to Riches, that's the whole deal of the Sith Inquisitor, and I like that a lot. I resonate with that, you know? 
love that. And that's another thing about the Guild Wars storyline. Yeah, you have the character creation is insane. It's significantly better than Swator's. Swator, you choose from a preset of faces. You can't really get detailed on your face, but I guess that doesn't matter in the long run. That's another. That's just video games like this in general. How long are you looking at somebody's face in Guild Wars 2? Just, I mean, you're looking at your own character's face for quite a while, but you're also doing that in Swator, so I guess. That's another point. Better dialogue and story options Guild War 2 does not have. No matter what you do in Guild Wars 2, your story basically ends up the exact same. You kill Zaitan, Path of Fire, you kill Balthazar. It's all in the exact same way as well. Like, leading up to Zaitan, you have like the choice, go to this Azura and he'll make you a weapon. Go to this, I don't know, other guy and he'll probably do something else. Like, I remember that bit in Guild Wars 2, but I also remember that that barely matters. That does not come into play at all. In the Swartor Sith Inquisitor story, main plot of the Sith Inquisitor, there's a part where you get... You have to uh, gain the power of a bunch of ghosts to defeat this big bad guy. I don't want to spoil it. This is <clears throat> big bad bad guy that you have to fight and you, so you go and you gain all the power from all these ancient spirits of the dead and then after that you stole these ancient spirits of the dead with you and they're really fucking up your head it's kind of like Revenant from Guild Wars 2 now I think of it they're really, they're really messing you up so you have to get rid of them somehow and so you make the choice of how are you going to go about getting rid of this evil I don't know, not necessarily, but like these just these spirits in your head. How are you gonna do that? So, Guild Wars 2, not Guild Wars 2, Sotor, you have the choice between either doing this thing that involves like. To, I don't remember what the specific fucking choices were, but I do remember they fucking matter. Do you, if you choose the wrong. If you choose something, it's gonna, like, come up later. Like, hmm, how do I... They come up later. The choices have a lot more impact in Zotor than they do in Guild Wars 2, is my point. And now, I want to compare back and forth with Warframe. One good thing... I get, one thing that Guild Wars 2 is better than Warframe, one thing that Warframe is better than Guild Wars 2, and... But it have to be the amount of things that you can do in Guild Wars 2. There's jumping puzzles, there's meta events, there's uh, dungeons, there's oops. there's a PvP community that actually exists and PvP is actually fun and there's no hackers probably except for will benders, they can, they can fuck off, those are, they're hacking no will benders legit well as opposed to uh, Warframe is not as many things to do. There's um, grinding from the new Warframe and building them and uh, killing your enemies. Yeah, killing a lot of people. That's, that's something you can do. I do want to stress that Warframe is my favorite video game of all time, so if I'm shitting on it, it's not, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to start on y'all, you know what I mean? And it's that exact thing that I think really um draws that line another thing is the this is not a good or bad but there is an obvious gameplay difference between warframe and Sotor despite them both being mmos mmorpgs that being um guild wars 2 is more traditional warframe is more like intense third person might as well be first person but if it was first person it wouldn't really work one thing warframe does better than guild wars 2 the power system i guess is the best way i could put it guild wars 2 is a great like power scaling system you everything's level 80 once you get to level 80 you're good you don't there's no like plus five levels with each new dlc bullshit the progression in Warframe is a lot more satisfying than the progression in Guild Wars 2. Guild Wars 2, the progression is about like 
Oh, you get you get more gear. Um, I think that's about it. Like you just you get more gear. I guess hero points is a thing. But once you max out whatever you do, that that's basically it. You're you're good. The big difference with Warfare and Guild Wars 2. A lot of the time in Guild Wars 2, I'm looking at my hotbar just to see what abilities are on cooldown, what aren't, what I should be clicking. And because of that, I'm not looking at the enemy. So I'm not able to dodge attacks that I shouldn't be dodging. Unless I'm playing a super, super character or a character that I literally have 150 hours on, like my Mesmer, I'm always looking at my hotbar. But this Vindicator, which I have seven hours on, I am always looking at my health bar. Let me say. And so I'm always like, and it's not really fun in combat to look at your health bar. In Warframe, you have four abilities, and left, which is one, two, three, four, on your keyboard. As well as E, which is your melee, and left click, which is your gun. And, and that's basically it. Because of that, the combat in Warframe is a lot more fun. It's a lot more um, immersive, I guess would be the best way to put it. Like, I feel like I am the Warframe, I'm doing the shit, I'm, so I'm whipping the... I'm doing the thing. Guild Wars 2 is a great game. Final final say. Guild Wars 2, Warframe, and Switch 4 are all great games. Switch 4 is a bit expensive. Do I regret paying for more CDs with a subscription for Switch 4? Yes, very much. I played that game for the story. I tried to play that game for the gearing, which is what the subscription is. That's a really good thing about Switch 4. You can fully enjoy all of the story content without having to pay a dime. Not a great thing about Guild Wars 2, you have to pay a decent bit of money to enjoy what is, in my opinion, the best of the story. One thing really good that Guild Wars 2 does that Warframe does not is the open world. Anyone who plays Warframe know that open world stinky voodoo. Open world boring, open world not fun, unless you're a Gauss or Titania main. But even then, that's only, that's only fun because you can do it quicker, which means in the long run you do it less because it's not fun. Open world stinky doodle. I tried it three times. All three times, stinky voodoo. The only reason I like the Orb Ballast is because of nostalgia, because the second I downloaded the game, I grinded my ass off on the game because I thought she was cool. And it ended up being my third ever Warframe so fucking now. Yeah, I don't know, subscribe please, uh, join my Discord, link in description. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, link in description. Um, Do, do the, um, play Warframe and Switch 4 games, too. They're cool. They're all really fun. 